Well, hello, church family. Welcome to this online service at Common Ground at FUMC Brownwood. I'm so glad that you've chosen to connect with us to be a part of this. I wanted to make a little video at the very beginning, kind of an announcement video, to answer the question that everyone is asking. And it's the right question. That question is, when are we going to get to start having church again? When are we going to get to start meeting for worship in person again? And so here's the answer to that. Pastor Jay and I have been talking, and we both wanted to communicate this in our videos today. Next Sunday has been the target date for reopening that our leadership team set back several weeks ago when we suspended in-person worship. Our leadership team will meet tomorrow, January the 11th in the evening. And after reviewing a lot of the information, I can tell you this, that as we have talked to one another by phone and text and email, that some members of the leadership team are very concerned as we see the number of cases in Brown County rising and that the, the vaccine has not been made readily available yet and they are approaching this with a sense of caution about whether or not we should reopen yet. And there are some members on the leadership team who feel that we should open immediately, that it's important that we get going again. And so this is, I think, indicative of how this conversation has gone uh, in every circle, uh, that there are definitely different ways of looking at it. And so we ask that you pray for us to have patience as we pursue this, to give us wisdom, and that we would have a sense of clarity about where God wants us to be as a church at this time as we move forward. FUMC has weathered this storm well, and I believe we will continue to do so. So we ask for your patience as we consider what it may look like for us to move back into in-person worship during this difficult time in our nation and in our community. So be watching our Facebook page and your email for more information about the results of the meeting uh, which will take place again tomorrow evening. Thank you for being a part of this. Now let's turn our attention to a new series I'm beginning today as we begin the new year called Reset, Finding God in Seasons of Change. You need to hit the reset button. Yes. Yep. Reset your life and say, you know what? Yep. I have this, this huge gift of another day. Take a step away from your business Take a step away from other people's opinions. Take a step away from asking questions. Reset. Give yourself a day. I end my seminars with this idea of a reset button, and I have couples stand up and, and apologize to each other. When I got a chance to hit the reset button, I took it. And each time, I came out stronger and more fulfilled. FUMC, I'm so glad to be coming to you today for this online service. And since I was off last Sunday, uh, this is my first official time to have a moment to say Happy New Year. So glad that you're being a part of this and using this to continue to connect with the ministry of our church. And we hope it'll be a positive and encouragement uh, time for you online uh, and to, to just kind of get you filled up and ready for a new year. I mean, I think we all are fully aware that we are coming out of a year that has been different and we're stepping into a new year that still has a little bit of that left and the adjustments that were imposed on our lives in 2020 i think have tested our resolve but i'm so grateful that our church has weathered the storm in the way that we have and uh and i'm just so grateful for the amount of people that have been encouraging and staying connected and faithful in their giving and all of the things that have been done to support each other as we get through this season even in the midst of all of the interruptions that have kind of brought a little bit of weariness on us uh, and interruption to our routine. So with all of that being said, I know that we are in so many ways needing to hit the reset button. And as the bumper video showed you, a lot of people talk about hitting the reset button in lots of different situations and circumstances and for different reasons. I think learning to hit the reset button is healthy and I think it's a necessary skill to keep us sharp. It is something that we need to have ingrained in the rhythms of our lives. Finding God in seasons of change. See, not only do I think that, that we need to believe that as we hit the reset button that God will help us with that, I think we need to know that He is active always in making Himself more accessible in seasons when we're being challenged in specific ways than He is even in kind of our normal routines. So this is a changing season, and I think we need to be expecting God to reveal Himself to us in new ways. It is the ability to reset that keeps us from getting burned out, keeps us from getting stuck in our thinking, keeps us from getting stagnant in our relationships. 
So how do we reset? Lots of ways people reset, right? Taking some time off resets us, going for a run or making a trip to the gym for some exercise, going out of town. It seems like a Brownwood mantra that every once in a while we got to, you know, see the city limits of Brownwood in our rear view mirror, go somewhere else and just kind of get out of town. And that's important. A boss telling you to take a few days off, a school teacher taking a mental health day. Vacations are themselves a form of reset. So time out in nature is a good way to reset. I'm told that yoga helps you to meditate on one thing and encourages you to be fully present. And by that, you can reset your mind and your thinking. And so lots of ways that we can do that. Yoga uh, and other things can help us do that. But resetting, I think, is also an important part of our spiritual rhythms. Think about it. God said that we should rest one day a week. The Sabbath is itself a weekly reset. Prayer resets our focus. Fasting resets us in so many ways. And time in community with the people of God is something that helps us to reset. We all need these particular times. So where does that leave us today? Where does that leave us today? What are we in need of as we step into a new year and perhaps at some level, level need to hit the reset button in ways that we've never had to do before? I hope today to help you kind of connect the dots and as we get together, hopefully in the future, that we might repeat some of these things when we're together live and in person. So how are we gonna do that? I think the Bible says a lot about reset in different ways and different stories throughout the, the biblical narrative. The story of Esther is one that we will look at. Esther had to reset her life in order to fulfill her mission and do what God was calling her to do. With the help of Mordecai and others, she was able to do that. In Acts chapter 10, the apostle Peter has to hit a major reset button. God comes to him and speaks to him in a vision and through uh, the lives of other people around him in Cornelius, and he hits the reset button. So I want us over the next few weeks to, to do what we can to help you find the reset button and to gaze into scriptures and looks at, look at the principles and the examples of how God's people at different times were able to reset in order to chart a new course and accomplish their mission, because we're in the same boat. These stories, I think, have treasures that can help us. And so we're going to come to them to kind of excavate the treasures and find that to be something pertinent to our lives today. Years ago, I went to Mexico City, and outside of Mexico City are the pyramids of Tenochtitlan. And you go there, and they even allow you to climb on the pyramids. I stood on the Pyramid of the Sun and the Pyramid of the Moon. And you go way up on top of these. But around there, they're still excavating. After hundreds of years, they're still finding treasures. The scripture is no different than that. Uh, that after all these years that it's been written, if we go to it with our heart and our tent, we can, can, can mine out of that treasures that will help us in our lives. I want to say that I think 2021 holds promise and relief and hope. And I think we can capitalize on that if we can find the reset button and make some adjustments so that we're fully prepared for what he has for us to do in this new year. So our scripture today is where I like to be on every New Year's. This scripture is saturated with the intent of the prophet to speak the Word of God to help God's people reset, to adjust their thinking in order that they can fully embrace the new thing that God is doing. So I'm in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19, and it says this, Do not remember the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? For I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Do not remember the, fo the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. This is in itself a reset that God was given to his people. And he began, begins by saying, I just want to mention this, this is not the main point, but, but he mentions this word, behold. I say this every once in a while. Behold is not a word that we use in our culture and in our vocabulary. But to behold something is to observe something with care, to be very intentional about how you look at it. It means to fix your mind on something. And so I want to ask you this question. As we go into 2021, what are you fixing your mind on? What are you really observing with care and focusing on and thinking about? Because the first point is this, that hitting the re reset button begins in your mind. Hitting the reset begins with how you think in your mind. When you think about the possibilities of the future in this new year coming in, what is it that's going through your mind? Not what would you want your church friends to think that you're thinking, but what are you really thinking when you think about that? What are the thoughts that are repeating in your head 
day after day. Are they productive or destructive? And what are thoughts that are, that are helping you to be open to change? And are there, are there some ongoing frustrations about the changes going on around you? I mean, just what's going on in your mind? Because if you're going to hit the reset button, the first thing you've got to do is address with what you're thinking. You've got to address your mind. So just know that a reset begins in your mind. Secondly, I would say this. I think the apostle, I think not the apostle, but the prophet, I think the prophet here makes it clear that he wants us to do this, that the past needs to be exactly that, the past. It needs to be behind us. Let's look at different translations, okay? Good News Translation translates that verse, do not cling to the events of the past or dwell on what happened long ago. Amplified says, do not ponder on the things of the past. You've got to put King Jimmy in here. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. New American Standard, do not call to mind the former things or consider the things of the past. And then the New Living Translation, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm about to do. <laughs> See, it's like a kaleidoscope. You're looking at the same thing, but every time you turn it a little bit, you see a different angle. And I think different translations do that. Listen, the past needs to be the past. We don't need to think about the former things. We don't need to ponder on the things that are in the past. We don't need to cling to the things of the past. We don't need to dwell on what's in the past. We need to let the past be the past. We need to be like Mac Davis. I thought happiness was Lubbock, Texas in my rearview mirror. And what we ought to say right now, in a lot of ways, maybe we're already saying it, I thought some of these things I experienced in 2020 are a lot better in my rearview mirror. Let the past be the past. Now I want to say this, I want you to hear me clearly. I think the greatest danger for any church might be on, in our insistence on how deeply and fondly we remember the good times. Because when the prophet says to these 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 guys in Isaiah 43, a part that we didn't read, he tells them about the things that God did that were good. Like, remember when God opened the sea and we walked across on dry ground? And remember these amazing miracles God did? Do you all remember that? And they're like, yeah, 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 we remember. And then he says, you know what? Don't remember the things of the past. God's going to do a new thing. Forget about that. Forget about it. Think about the new thing that's about to come forward. And so Isaiah reminds us that sometimes the hardest thing to get over from the past is the good stuff. How about past ministries that we've had in our church that are no longer a part of the life of our church? But we wish they were, but they're not, they're gone. How about you know, the things that you, you wished were still the same, but are no longer the same? We have to let the past be the past in order to make room, kind of clear the deck. Resetting the mechanism is a way to clear the deck so that there's room for the new, because it's kind of like this. You can't put new wine in old wineskins. There are some new things I think the Lord wants to do in our church, in our ministries, in the life of our community, that until we get room for them, we'll have trouble really receiving them. It's no secret that one of my favorite TV shows, actually it's my favorite TV show of all time, is West Wing. And President Bartlett, played by Martin Sheen, he had this saying that's kind of woven through the tapestry of all the series. And the, the, the saying is this, and it's not gonna sound like a lot when I say it. The saying is, what's next? But he'll be in a meeting and somebody will say a lot of information and they're dealing with very stressful, big events. And he'll say, okay, got it. And then he'll go on to the next thing and he'll say, what's next? And somebody will say, well, I think what he was saying, I know what Bill was saying was, you know, this, this, and this. And the president say, listen, I heard what he said. I'm gonna consider it. What I'm saying to you is, I'm ready to move on. What's next? What about you? Are you ready to move on? Are you ready to move on? Are you ready to say, what's next? Because this idea of the past really being the past is a mindset. It's a way of interacting with life's demands and adapting to change. It's also a way of maintaining momentum, that you're not dragging something with you. The prophet here is saying in old language, what's next? And I want to be the guy like that. So why reset and follow the prophet's words? So we can handle what's next. And lastly, this, and this may be the most important thing to say, the new thing is better than the old thing. Sounds obvious, right? But I'm like, I'm a guy that once I get a pattern or I like things the way they are, I just want them to stay the way they are. I don't want change. 
uh, about certain things. But we have to remember that the new thing is always better than the old thing, in, in the Lord anyway. And so a reset is necessary to be able to clearly see the new thing and make room for it in your mind, in your thinking, in your emotions. See, look at look what the prophet says. See, I am doing a new thing. Shall you not perceive it? For now it springs up. How about the message translation? Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? Don't you see it? For there it is. For I'm making a road through the desert and rivers in the badlands. New Living Translation. But forget about all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm about to do. See, we, we got to find a way to reset ourselves. And so make sure this year as you go into the new year that you find a way to hit the reset button or it's possible that you might miss the new thing. Because remember in the Lord, it's always true that the new thing is better than the old thing. And you can't fit new wine into old wineskins. So let's make sure we're not late to the party. Let's reset now so that when the new thing comes, we have some room in our thinking, in our mind, our emotions, and in our hopes and expectations in our hearts for what God wants to do when, when we get back together in person, when we take on new ministries, when we make changes that are necessary so that we can continue moving forward and asking what's next instead of spending all our time bogged down thinking about what used to be. We've got to be like that. So let's make sure that as we move into the new year, that we're hitting the reset button. It may be more important to do it this year than ever before. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you that you come to us with exactly the right words in the right seasons to adjust us, to encourage us, to remind us that you're with us. We ask you to speak to us in that way now in this season and through this word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So Happy New Year again. Hope to see you soon. Have a great week.